On April 4, 2011, hacktivist group Anonymous brought down Sony's PlayStation Network or PSN with targeted distributed denial of service attacks or DDoS. Anonymous had warned Sony of retaliation after Sony's legal action against two people. George Hotz, known as GeoHot, and Alexander Igorenkov, who goes by C-name Graf Chikolo. Anonymous's message to Sony was to the point. Congratulations, Sony. You have now received the undivided attention of Anonymous. Your recent legal action against fellow hackers GeoHot and Graf Chikolo has not only alarmed us, it has been deemed wholly unforgivable. You have now abused the judicial system in an attempt to censor information on how your products work. You have victimized your own customers merely for possessing and sharing information and continue to target every person who seeks this information. In doing so, you have violated the privacy of thousands. This is the information they were willing to teach the world for free. The very same information you wish to suppress for sake of corporate greed and complete control of its users. Knowledge is free. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. In 2009, GeoHot had announced on his blog that he was interested in hacking the Sony PlayStation 3. His method to do this was to utilize other OS, which would permit Linux to be installed and run on the hardware. Sony was no stranger to allowing its users to run Linux on their hardware, and it was also available on the PlayStation 2. But there, it was an optional extra that required a hard drive, mouse, keyboard, and a Linux disk. Other OS on the PlayStation 3 came out of the box as a feature. GeoHot published his findings on his blog and found a method to bypass the security hypervisor. His findings caught the attention of Sony who in March of 2010 posted an update to the PlayStation 3 to completely disable other OS and suppress anyone who wanted to follow on from GeoHot's previous work. In July of 2010, GeoHot announced he was retiring from the PS3 scene. It was a cool ride and I learned a lot, he stated but Sony would not breathe a sigh of relief for long. In late 2010, Fail Overflow, a hardware hacking group motivated by the removal of other OS, had found a way to obtain the private key for the PlayStation 3 without having to open up the system. At that point, the key itself wasn't enough to execute unsigned code, but it could be used to sign software that could. GeoHot, who had previously stepped away from the PS3, combined his work with Fail Overflow's discovery and created a package to run unsigned code on the hardware. In early 2011, GeoHot posted this method and his files onto his website. Around the same time, Graf Chikolo released a custom firmware that would reinstate other OS onto the PlayStation 3, allowing previous owners to run Linux once again. In January of 2011, Sony filed a court order against GeoHot and Fail Overflow under violation of DMCA and computer fraud. In February, Graf Chikolo's house was raided by police and he was arrested facing numerous charges. Hacktivist group Anonymous and their message to Sony in April of 2011 was a direct response to the court order and arrest of GeoHot and Graf Chikolo. Anonymous attacked Sony's service for three days. The disruption was known as Hashtag Op Sony or Operation Sony. Its mission was to do whatever it could to undermine Sony's potential to operate. On April 7th, they halted their attacks. Anonymous realized that it was hurting the consumers more than Sony, so they decided to back down. Anonymous is not attacking the PSN at this time. We realized that targeting the PSN is not a good idea. We have therefore temporarily suspended our action until a method is found that will not severely impact Sony customers. Normal PSN service resumed after that, but on the morning of April 19th, PSN was hit again. But this time it wasn't Anonymous that caused the outage, it was Sony. Two days later on April 21st, Sony took the PlayStation Network offline. As you are no doubt aware, the current emergency outage is continuing this afternoon and all Sony online network services remain unavailable. Sony had warned its customers that it could be a full day or more of downtime. The very next day on April 22nd, Sony announced in a press release that there was an external intrusion on their system that affected both PlayStation Network and Curiosity services and admitted that they had disabled PSN as far back as April 20th. PSN had remained offline for another week, which had caused outrage from customers who weren't sure what was going on. But Sony emerged 
announcing what was to be a massive security breach that affected up to 77 million customers. It's being called a security breach of staggering proportions. Sony has confirmed that hackers broke into its PlayStation network, exposing the personal information of up to 77 million users worldwide. Users of Sony's PlayStation network have been greeted instead by error messages. The electronics giant says it shut down the service, which is used by 75 million people worldwide, after suffering what the company called an external intrusion last Wednesday. Although we are still investigating the details of this incident, we believe that an unauthorized person has obtained the following information that's provided. Name, address, country, email address, birth date, PlayStation Network password and login, and PSN online ID. It's also possible that your profile data, including purchase history and billing address, and your PlayStation Network Curiosity password security answers may have also been obtained. The PlayStation Network had remained offline as Sony had brought in a security firm to investigate the breach as well as perform updates to the service. On May 1st, 2011, Sony completed its upgrade of its security on PSN and held a press conference in Japan to outline what it was doing to protect its customers. Sony executives apologized and offered its customers a welcome back package which would be two free games and 30 days of free PlayStation Plus and a year of free identity theft protection. On May 2nd, 2011, one day after the top brass Sony executives apologized for the outage, Sony Online Entertainment was breached by hackers, stealing more than 24 million users' information. We are today advising you that the personal information you provided us in connection with your SOE account may have been stolen in a cyber attack. Sony Online Entertainment was not directly linked with the PlayStation Network, rather its division was responsible for multiplayer games such as the popular EverQuest franchise, Planetfall 2, DC Universe Online and other multiplayer games. Sony Online Entertainment had disabled its services as a result of this breach. In June of 2011, hackers also took down another Sony network, this time Sony Pictures. Hacking group LOLSEC claimed responsibility boasting, every bit of data we took was not encrypted. Sony stored over 1 million passwords of its customers in plain text, which means it's just a matter of taking it. Sony denied the claims, but LOLSEC uploaded a 5 megabyte file outloading how they pulled off the Sony Pictures hack via very simple SQL injection methods. In September of 2011, the FBI announced that it had made arrests in the Sony Pictures breach. Two members of LOLSEC were arrested and charged. Many news outlets claimed that it had made arrests in the Sony hack, which many had wrongly assumed was for the PlayStation Network. So what was the actual cause of the PSN hack? One of the earliest popular theories was there was some discussion about a custom firmware known as Rebug that was responsible. Rebug is indeed a custom firmware for jailbroken PS3 systems, which enables homebrew and piracy on those systems. There was also the ability to re-enable functionality that should only be available to debug versions of the PlayStation 3, including access to the internal developer network, which is used to road test online functionality during a game's production. This is very similar to the Xbox 360's partner net system. The developer network simulates a user purchasing a game via a placeholder credit card. This meant that hackers could then steal and download pre-release beta and early releases of games before they were released to the public. But this rebug exploit was patched as part of the PSN hack downtime, but it was not responsible for the hack itself. At the time, Sony had accused Anonymous, claiming they had found files on their servers labeled Anonymous and We Are Legion. But as of 2020, no arrests in the PSN hacking of 2011 had ever been made. Now, I went back and spoke to a few PS3 scene members who were around back in those days, and they told me that Anonymous was not skilled enough to pull off the PSN hack. The truth is, Sony never learned who was responsible. But here's what we do know. When Anonymous was laying the groundwork for its initial DDoS attacks on the PSN, they performed scans on Sony's servers identifying the long outdated versions of software. For example, they found the outdated versions of the Apache web server and OpenSSH, which would be vulnerable to security threats. Anonymous sent this information to the Computer Build magazine in Germany before the DDoS attacks had occurred, labeling Sony's servers woefully obsolete. Computer Build published these findings later in their magazine. But a Sony spokesperson responded to Bill's accusation saying, 
we are not aware of any obsolete or unpatched server software. But insider sources claim that anonymous information was accurate. PSN vulnerabilities were well known and had been discussed in public forums like IRC for months. When word got around IRC channels that Sony's network was so poorly secured, many hackers started becoming interested in it to see what could be achieved. One particular IRC log from 2011 suggests that the URLs were not encrypted and personal information was sent through HTTP query strings. Sony's message to the public was also quite confusing. They first claimed that passwords were stored unencrypted, which caused a public outcry. Later, they clarified this by saying that all passwords were transformed using a hash function. These hash functions were not salted, however, which means it was still possible to break people's passwords. PSN was hacked server-side, most likely due to an out-of-date Apache web server with known vulnerabilities. Hackers simply identified the authorization server and from there were able to probe and retrieve server-side logs, which should never have been made visible remotely in the first place, and they had found their entry point. Coupled with information passed around in plain text, hashed but not salted passwords exposed Sony's poor security on PSN. But who was ultimately responsible? That was never determined, but it could have been anyone. So we don't know for sure who pulled off the PSN hack of 2011, but if you were to ask me, I would say it was organized crime with the goal of major credit card theft. After the removal of other OS and court orders handed out to Geohot, Fail Overflow and Graf Jacolo, to get back at Sony was simple. Sony's network security was so woefully poor and had become the obvious weak point. Failure to act on Sony's behalf meant that PSN security was breached and all information the user entrusted to Sony had been compromised. These days, it's hard to imagine that all this had occurred, that for almost a whole month, their services were offline and how it affected games all around the world. Now, while we see the occasional DDoS outage today, there was nothing on this scale since, and hopefully there never will be. So there you have it guys, that's the PSN hack of 2011. It's a fascinating story to go back and revisit. And I, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I did a lot of research, talked to a lot of people, and really just kind of dug up a lot of information, got some IRC logs as well. And it really is an interesting tale to tell, especially in 2020 when something like this isn't really something you can really put your head around anymore. But the fact that a major gaming service was down for over 20 days around the world is just absolutely astounding to me and you know if you were there in the days of PSN going down in 2011 I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below what's your story everyone has a story to tell when when this all went down so I definitely want to hear your story in the comments below well guys that will do it for this video thank you so much for watching if you liked it you know what to do leave me a thumbs up and as always don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video bye for now